All right. Howdy, folks. Welcome to another episode of the Reselling Each Podcast. I have my friends, Russ and Shane, here. How's it going, guys? Mo, it is going good and hot down in Savannah, Georgia. We are in summer. Shane, how's things there in the uh, Midwest and Illinois? It's going good. It's another humid year. Um, really hot, and when it's 80, it feels like 105. So Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's Get, kind of we have, I mean, I'm in the Bay. I'm going back and forth between the Bay and about an hour and a half above. And I'm complaining that over here, it's probably about 85, 86. We don't have humidity, though. If you go up north, it's kind of a little bit drier. But it's like 90, 92. And I was complaining about that last weekend when I was up there. So I know I shouldn't I shouldn't complain because it's not <laughs> as bad. <laughs> 90, 90, 92 gets us comfortable. Yeah, that's for me. It, 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 yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. We're, we're into our rain every day period, so it, it both cools us off, but the the oppressive, the, the uh, humidity can get so oppressive, much like on the scale of New Orleans. Um, I mean, and, yeah. I mean, I've never, have I been in, no, I haven't been to New Orleans. I've been to, I've been to Georgia, but I was there for like two or three days. I've been to, I'm trying to think of Midwest South. I haven't technically been to Chicago. I've been to O'Hare. O'Hare is that in Chicago? Yeah. Yeah, that's okay. in Chicago. I've been to O'Hare Airport. But that doesn't they, have, airport. they have Midway and O'Hare. So yes. Two airports. Well, I don't know. Maybe it was Midway, which is the big one, the, the behemoth. That's, o, that's O'Hare. That's O'Hare. It's that's O'Hare. O'Hare. O'Hare then. Yeah. Midway is pretty big, but it's not nothing compared to O'Hare. Okay. That thing was crazy. I'm like, The biggest wow. – the biggest airport I ever went to was in Atlanta, and it has a subway underneath the airport. And I'm like, this is awesome. I think I've been there too. <laughs> I went to Atlanta for like two days. But yeah. so, Atlanta, so you know, Atlanta airport has its own police department, its own fire yeah. department, its oh, own yeah. city, its own city council. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that it's thing is just. It's own city and it's just spread out. And I've literally been like from A to D one time, like on a rush flight from A to D, A concourse to D concourse, and just about, you know, back in my younger days when I could move a lot easier. Yeah. So I hate to cut you guys off, but I don't think we actually ever went over the topic of today's show. But uh, I think we were going to kind of have a kind of a broad thing about the basic summer slowdown reselling wherever you resell ebay amazon mercari posh markets whatever it is Spe- so, speaking of summer huh it, you know yeah. it seems like summer and slowdown always comes right yes <laughs> i don't think it's even technically summer yet isn't it i mean uh no june 23rd 22nd yeah i think something like i mean it feels like summer as soon as i have to not wear two shirts that's the way <laughs> that's- it well uh memorial day is traditional start of summer Yes. So, yeah. So, you know, we start. Did you guys see sales drop off immediately after Memorial Day? Or have you seen some sales drop off? It was kind of, it's kind of weird because I had the build up to Memorial Day was kind of slow. But Memorial Day weekend actually was not that bad. And that was kind of the end of when I was listing. Was it the eighth? Yeah. That was kind of the tail end because I haven't really listed for about 10 days to two weeks. That right, was the tail end. You're, you're, you're you're in the middle. You're, you're finishing, and and I've seen pictures of some of the house, and you know, yeah. moving into a beautiful new home. I went in there trying to videotape. I went over my iPhone. We don't have internet set up yet, so I figured, okay, I, at least I can do maybe an Instagram live, Facebook live, something. Every time I went in, it would just said, "Cannot connect, cannot connect." I couldn't do anything. I took a few pictures of like the dirty carpet and stuff like that. But I mean, <laughs> other than that, uh, I was so annoyed because I wanted to take one of those empty house pictures, but right. couldn't do it, couldn't do it. So I'm going to try again this weekend, hopefully with Comcast up. Um, so you saw, now I saw decent, or you know, good before Labor Day weekend was kind of slow for me. Yeah. But then after, uh, after Labor Day, I'm oh, sorry, Memorial Day. I'm sorry, Memorial Day. Yeah. Um, after Memorial Day, I'm I've been rock and roll again, but uh, so I haven't seen a slowdown. But yeah, I'm but I'm, tw- I mean, I'm I'm tweaking. Yeah, it's kind of with me. Like I, I was telling you guys earlier, I'm not really listing. I'm not really picking or listing at this point. Um, hopefully, I'll get started again on Monday. But 
I what I did was I consciously left items. I let them end probably about two weeks ago. So I have about a hundred items that were just sitting there. And then I figured if I split these into 20 a day, 15 a day, and I'll relist them, I'll sell similar, I'll auction some, I'll mix them up, change the titles, topics, the pictures, categories even. And it seemed to work. I'm not at full capacity, but I'm probably, I'm getting sales every day. Good. Good. So, what about Sh something. Shane? Did you see a, a slowdown in vintage or is, you know, vintage being the one off to me, always kind of like when that person wants it, they're yeah. gonna they're they're gonna see it. So you you probably haven't seen much slowdown. There's so vintage is kind of it's kind of weird because they have those items that sell instantly, and you have those items that sit for six months and then sell for full price. And so that's where I've really changed. Like this summer, I've really changed my business model to where I sell everything, hard goods, as much as I can in a variety. And I think that's really really helped because a lot of resellers, I think. They see that slow down because of clothing. Yeah. Yeah. And they, and they, you know, that can get into your mindset too. It's like, well, summer's coming, mm -hmm. it's slowing down and I'm going to use it to source or something like that. Um, I recently switched over to using a lot of auctions and it was because I, I did those bulk lot buys. Yeah. You know, if I, if I get, you know, my bottom line's $10, I started auction at $9.99. And mm -hmm. if I get that out of each item, even if it's a twenty, thirty, forty dollar item, I'm okay because I've already made my money on the lot. And that right. was my that was my tweak and my adjustment to keep the money rolling in. So, you know, it, it, is is there a slowdown? Sure, if you if you let it, but there's ways to combat it. Yep, and just like last weekend, I went out to a yard sale and bought twenty six dollars in hair care product, which is going to net me over four thousand dollars in sales. Oh, and it was a crazy, awesome. crazy bulk deal I got. And I went to this like Christian yard sale and they couldn't use the product or give it away because the pictures were kind of risky, risque. And oh, gotcha. it's going to net like $4,100 in sales. So I'm really changing. Like I started at hard goods on eBay and I'm really sourcing hard goods hard, especially golf. Oh, absolutely. This time of year, it, it is golf. If you look at the curve on the growth, on your growth charts, you know, yep. five years of data, golf is just in heavy, heavy hit right now. I, I sold two golf clubs last week for about $100, mm -hmm. two. Yep. You know, and... That's crazy. Can you backtrack a little bit about that wholesale deal you just did there? Or Yeah, yeah. so... <laughs> I went to this yard sale and I posted a YouTube video about it and I went to this yard sale and I wasn't finding anything. And I'm like, man, if I could just find one really good deal. And this was at like 1030 in the morning. So I, I went to this storage unit place and they were having a yard sale inside there. And this Christian like youth group had rented out like four storage units and we're selling all kids clothes. And I'm like, I hate selling kids clothes. So I really just am going to pass. And I started walking out and I looked over and there was this one table with these closed boxes stacked on it, like stacked. And it had like $2 or $3 a box on it or 20 cents each. And I look in one and it's hair care product. And it's, I think it's made by Revlon and it's called DFI. And there was hairspray and uh, volumizer and frizz, anti-frizz stuff. So I looked at them and I said, how much do you want for all of this? And they're like, oh my gosh, if you buy all of it, let's say a dollar a box. So I paid them $20 and I filled my trunk up. It's like 300 and some pieces. And I just did two listings. Boop. And listed it all. And it's, I added it up. Total, it's going to be about. 4100 net sales nice. is it is it all the same item i mean is it yeah it's all this okay so you got like three different items so yeah yeah so but it's just man that's replenishable yep. that's a replenishable uh you know why that's doubly uh, smart from heaven yeah you know why that's doubly smart is because amazon's cracking down so much on a lot of these hair like similar health products you probably can't sell it there you I mean you might be able nope. to but you, you're going to get markups and all these other places that people are scrambling away from Amazon for. Yep. That's and I, I actually uh, 
Amazon one on my phone and to see what I was selling. It was like twelve forty three. Yeah. So I put it at twelve forty four and just let it sit. And I'm the lowest listings on eBay on all three. Nice. So. <laughs> so you sell two, you got your money back. Right, I sell two, yeah, and I yeah. get my money back. <laughs> easy, easy deal. Easy I paid deal. A, they actually wanted eighteen dollars. I handed them a twenty, and I'm like, "Here, keep the change." Keep the change. <laughs> That's how plush he is. He's he gonna throw that. You know, here, keep the two dollars. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. And it always that I love those because it always goes back to, you know, people. You know, people say, "Oh, you know, you took." No, we did not. You know, we're not scamming them or anything. Everybody in that process is going to be happy. They were happy yep. to get rid of it. You were you were thrilled to get it, and then your end customers are going to be like, "Oh man, I've been looking. You know, I'm I'm yep. just going to order. I don't want to have to go to the store for it." So yeah, yeah, everybody's happy be selling it. They don't want to sell the stuff, you know. Yeah, right. And Amazon's yeah. cracking down on anything with an expiration date or like a liquid or anything. It's really weird. And it would have been a great product to send in the FBA, but. No, I don't even do FBA at all. And, right. you know, I'm just going to run it through eBay because eBay has grown in that market so much. Yeah. With yeah. food, I mean, I never thought about food, too. Uh, some people, and then I heard people talking about selling, like, certain food snack items that you can't get that would be big on Amazon before. But now because of, obviously, they have yeah. the summer rule, and then now they're cracking down, like you said, on this, that, and the other, anything liquid, anything expiration, with an expiration. I mean, mm -hmm. the worst is I had this, what was it? Chocolate bars, and this is back in like October. It wasn't hot at all, November maybe. I sent them in, they were good sellers, and they sent them back to me saying they were expired. And then I got them back, and I flipped them over, and I looked, and then they weren't expired. It said like 2020 on it. I'm like, yeah, it's just, just one of the things that they're really cracking down on stuff. Yep. Why? So, have you seen? Um, and you you just did a, a one time listing with with multiple quantities. Oh yeah, I just did three listings because I had the okay. defrizz, the volumizer, and the hairspray, and I just added everything up and put the quantity of each, the whole quantity. I'm like one and done, and I'm just gonna let it sit and sell. Yeah. Good, uh, you, you, um, if you had, if you needed to move it, I mean, at that price, you don't need to move it. You know, oh, no. like you kind of, yeah, it's just gravy money. Yeah. But um, I tell you, I have really turned a corner on believing in auctions. Um, and, mm -hmm. and I think what's, what's happening in today, the way the algorithms are on the, the view, I'm going to be the first. And you got people that want to buy it now. They're not going to wait. Nope. So you try. So that's what, something like that. Uh, I would be apt for myself to say, okay, I'm going to put, you know, a bulk quantity up, but I'm also going to do a, a couple auction listings on them right. just to get them to feed in to put the auction at, you know, four ninety nine something like that, that they, right. uh, I don't like, I don't like going under, you know, I don't like selling four ninety nine stuff myself, but right. to, to get them flowing into you. Right. And say, you know, you, you put, I've got this over and buy it now. Right. So, and that's, yeah. and I, and I may do that if it's not moving that fast, I may just throw a couple up on auction just to kind of peak interest. But what I like to do is like on big bulks like that, I'm just a firm believer and just, I'm going to list it up and let it sit. And <laughs> it's yeah. crazy. I have some stuff I bought from Gainer Mountain. I got for 10 cents a piece and it's just, it's fishing rod cleaner. And it's a cleaner you clean your fishing rod with, and then it makes it shiny. And I've had them for like a year. And then just yesterday, someone bought three of them for like $27 or something <laughs> like that. I'm like. That's awesome. Or it was like $17.99. I, 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 I just have them listed for $5.99, and I just free shipping. Let them sit. Because I'm encouraging someone to buy multiples at that point. What what else can you guys suggest as far as like slow down? You know, uh the old saying is you want more sales, list more, have more items. If you have a thousand items on and they are closed and it's slow right now, mm -hmm. you know, we, do you guys feel that increasing it up to two, 3000 items, is that going to be, is that going to bring in enough sales to cover the summer slowdown? Um, um, I've never done close. So you guys know yeah, more about that. I mean, here's the thing. Feeding the beast, as they say on eBay and Amazon, it does help 
but at the same time you got to understand that these are these are times when people call it summer slowdown just think about it realistically people are on vacation schools out they don't need to buy x y and z that they would have those other nine months of the year right so that's gonna happen but at the same time just pumping out listings i've heard a lot of people saying that uh that's not necessarily the only thing you should do i think at this point if everybody has more time and everybody's jumping on board and plus you got these kids i mean teenagers now you got 14 15 year olds selling on ebay amazon uh, you know everything they're off from school <laughs> too you don't know um i mean so what i would say is do that plus tweak 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 mm -hmm. however you want to do it those yeah. titles those pictures i've even gone to the point where like i ha i do a lot of clothing so i have these shirts that i would list generally you know 39 29 people say reduce prices bump it up I'm not saying necessarily that sell that $29.99 shirt for $150, but I'm saying instead of $29.95, why don't you change that to $31.32 or something you know, else that other people aren't. Maybe that number will stand out while you're scanning through it. Maybe the algorithm will pick it up and say, oh, that's different. I, I, cause nobody, I don't know yeah. what the algorithm, how it works, but right. I think any kind of tweak would be my best advice and consistent tweaking. There's some psychology on, on pricing on that too, Mo, about, um, you know, everybody knows about the 0.99, the 99 yeah. cent, you know, 1999 is 20 bucks, but it's still under 20 bucks. Yep. And yeah. that's the psychology, but it's also the psychology of putting a, a, an odd number like that. You said, you know, 3122 that, that catches people's eye. Yep. And because yep. it, it's different than all, you know, they're scrolling through, they're scrolling through, and boom, 3122, and they stop and they'll look at it. And then the more you look at it, the better your chances are. All right. We got somebody jumped on. John, awesome. how's, it going? Me, how's it going, man? Give me a second. I'm making rookie mistakes here. No, we're all working. Okay. I got to pull up my other. Uh, I was listening to you guys, and then I got my headphones on so you guys can't hear me, but I can hear both of me and you and everyone else. How are you guys doing today? Awesome. What's up, John? How's it going? Oh, pretty good. I hope my awesome. internet's okay. I live out in the middle of nowhere, and uh, we have really poor internet. I think they have to bring it in and mine and, and helicopters and stuff like that. <laughs> now, now, John, we've recently been been kind of back and forth on, on, uh, on YouTube and stuff and saying hi. Now, you're in Missouri, correct? Yes, sir. I sure am. What what part of Missouri are you in? I live in southeast Missouri. It's a little small town uh, in the Madison County area. It's called Fredericktown. Um, we're about sixty miles south of uh, St. Louis. So yeah, yeah. I, I used to. I live pretty close I, to Shane. I I uh, used to own. I I grew up kind of in. I kind of grew up in St. Louis. Lived there a lot of years. I used to own property down uh, past Ironton, so I know that area very well. Then you're. I live in Fredertown, Then you know exactly where I'm at. Yeah. Hey, yeah. it's a small world. It's so crazy. Where are you from, bro? <laughs> yeah. And, I swear and this you're, is. The you're thinking about coming down this way, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. I want to. Where are you from? Are you from Georgia? Uh, right now, I'm in Savannah, Georgia. Yeah. Oh yeah, that that's gorgeous, man. We're thinking about Athens. Maybe uh, we looked at Bowman. I went there, and I'm like, no, not Bowman. <laughs> so now we're thinking it. We're thinking about that little town that's a little bit, uh, a little bit south west of Bowman. I can't remember the name. It's really cool. Um, I'm brain dead at this point. I've looked at so many little towns there, but we we just <laughs> like we love Athens, but we like the small town feel too. Yeah. How far yeah. is that? Just uh, like between the cities that you're moving to. Um. Well, the outside of Athens, we're probably Athens is about forty-five minutes. Well, two hours with traffic outside of Atlanta, but then well, uh, the total, Bowman, total move would be about six hundred, six hundred and fifty miles. From oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. The Boot Hill of Missouri, yeah. But Georgia, there's just so much. See, the thing that's going on right now is that I don't know if I'm literally sitting on a gold mine. Because like our county that we live in, it's got this. It's one of the richest counties in minerals in the whole United States, right. and they're getting ready to open up the cobalt mines again in Madison County. And I own a forty-acre farm right outside of town, 
And I'm hoping that when the mine opens up and kicks off that like somebody comes along and like, here's a bunch of money. We want to buy your property. And I'll be like, that's awesome. That would be take cool. it. Because yeah. I heard about people yeah. leasing land. Can you do that? Like hold on to your land and have it leased out to them? It depends. I don't know if we own the mineral rights to our property, but what I'm more interested in is that it's uh, we own 40 acres. Just it connects to the city, so it would make a really awesome subdivision. So property, if people start moving here and they start speculating on property, it wouldn't take much. If somebody wrote a check with a uh, with a four and some zeros behind it, I would be gone. <laughs> <laughs> well, so. <and> you know, <laughs> What's funny is we're looking to, in the next three to four, maybe five years, move to down by Alabama or, or Florida. So, Oh, where in Florida? Uh, I don't know yet, but if we move to Florida, it'll be Pensacola area because okay. my wife has some family right in Pensacola. That's so, like north, right? Oh, yeah. In, uh, yeah, it's yeah. like right in the panhandle, yeah. Pensacola is the furthest uh, western point of Florida, Mo. Gotcha. It's right there by uh, – it's about two hours from New Orleans. So, but then we've looked yeah. at Alabama too because Alabama, the properties are so cheap, so cheap. Yeah, I'm, yeah I, I really like the Huntsville area. I think that it's pretty cool. Yeah. That would be awesome if John moved to Alabama and then I moved to Alabama about the same distance that we are away from each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, well, we could, what, be, we, could, we would easy be neighbors, man. We could go yeah. yard selling together because we buy oh, yeah. different stuff. Oh, yeah, totally. I think it'd be real cool if you guys go on the other side of Alabama and just stay away from Savannah, Georgia. Because <laughs> you, guys... <laughs> you guys would come wipe me out, man. You guys... <laughs> Russ is worried now. He's like, oh, man, what's going mean, no, Savannah, yeah. there's nothing to pick in Savannah anymore. I'm having for yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. Dude. It's desolate. There's cactuses and tumbleweeds. There. Oh, it's <laughs> bad. It's, it's bad. It's so... <laughs> All right, so John, yeah. let me ask you a question real fast. We're talking okay. about summer slowdown. Can you give anybody a tip on how you're handling it, or you know, if you even see a slowdown? Um, there's always ups and downs when it comes to eBay. I've been doing this for 20 years, and I find the number one way to combat seller slowdown is to sell the stuff that people are looking for. And if you've been doing this for a while, you can you can easily do that by just keeping really good records. I know, like today. I went out and I spent three hundred dollars, and I'll probably rake in about you know I'll probably I, I bought a typewriter for for twenty six bucks, and I'll probably sell that for three hundred dollars. It's absolutely gorgeous, and that's that's what I do. Like I don't I do clothing. I bought a couple shirts today, but like diversity, I mean that's the number one rule I could just I live by is don't don't box myself in. Be diverse. John, let me ask you this question real quick. Uh-oh. Tell everybody what you sold this month, how much this month on eBay, because I know you've, you've, you've kind of launched it out there in a couple of your YouTube videos before. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, let me pull it up. I just got done listing a headlight for a Monte Carlo. This, that's this how is, diverse I am. That's why I, 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 you guys. I, asked, I asked him this question because he is like, the number one – like ebayer that will show you there's no slowdown um i there, there is I, some but i've did today i've had zero absolutely nada let me see if i can pull up my hangout here scoot this over and i will actually i will um if it allows me i will screen share i don't know my internet's so horrible you probably won't be able to see anything <laughs> but um I've sold nothing today, but we've did we're at thirteen hundred and sixty five dollars for the week, and Kill we've it. did six thousand one hundred and twenty eight dollars in the past thirty one days nice. and our best best day was four seventy five and our worst day was zero and our second worst day was eight and so that ninety that I, ninety day that ninety day number is remarkable it's seventeen thousand nine hundred but we took a vacation we went to Georgia yep. and that and that kicked my butt. Uh, I I talk a lot with uh, with uh, um, Lonnie from Garage Flips, and me and him are pretty much on par. He's just better looking. <laughs> <laughs> now, also, no one, most of your source. Do you do most of your sourcing in your area, or are you taking trips? 
<laughs> I'm as lazy as they come, bro. I wake up. I woke up at ten o'clock today. I went out and murdered it. I don't know what would have happened if I got up at seven o'clock. <laughs> you'd be a millionaire. Right? I, you'd be a millionaire. I killed it. Because what's no, what's, your, what's Fredrick, Fredericksburg now? Maybe sixty, seventy thousand, <laughs> eighty thousand. No, no, we're thirty I mean, five hundred strong. Right. The That's, county. That, <laughs> the county probably runs about twelve or fifteen thousand. Right. So, you know, people say, oh, I, I got a source. You know, I got, I, you can move to, if you're in the Atlanta area. You, you know, you get a lot of good stuff. Mo, you're in the Oakland area. You get a lot of good stuff. You know, no, here's John out here in, in, uh, in, I mean, out in the country. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Here's what's that. Uh, it counts what he knows. Here's, yeah. Here's something that I bought the other day. I don't know if you guys can see it, but I bought this, uh, get fiddle. I bought this. I bought this down at an auction down in Walmack, Missouri, and that town runs about twelve. <laughs> and I bought this beautiful uh, violin, and it came with a hard case. I can't see because I'm sitting in the dark, but it's a really nice one, and it retails new for about five hundred bucks. I paid ninety for it, so I kind of paid up for it. But most of the time, I pick stuff up like this, and I'm paying twenty five, thirty bucks for it. Yep, that stuff's same, funny around here. Um, same thing in Illinois. I can go to an auction every night of the week, any any direction I want to go, and I can I can go to an auction Monday through Sunday. And John's kind that. of in this same kind of Midwest area, you know. Like one of these days, I'm going to go over to St. Louis, and me and him are going to make some videos together. One of these we days, we sure are. What was it today? I'll just go over the highlights because I don't know if I'm going to get a chance to live stream. I'm trying to do a live stream every night to keep me motivated because I play World of Warcraft and it's a time killer. <laughs> <laughs> but um, let, let's see here. I bought a typewriter that uh, sell for 300. I bought a. Um, oh, now my brain's going going flat. I bought a I bought a porcelain sign that has a dinghy. And it's from the ocean, and it's from the 50s. I don't know what that'll sell for. I bought a couple of old milk bottles. Oh, man, now I'm just completely I'm completely running on empty today because I'm just so tired. But I spent I, – I took 150 out of the ATM, and then I the last place I stopped, I spent 60 So that was 212 bucks. and the back of my car is absolutely just it's packed just, full of stuff. A brass God, blade this, fan. Oh, man, nice. Nice. Thirty is bucks. Is this from uh, local resale shops, local thrift stores, local pawn shops? What what kind of stores are you hitting there? Oh, uh, that was all yard sales. I chased them way out in the country where uh, nobody's been, and um, like the this is how I approached to do with a brass blade fan. I walked up. I'm like Emerson brass blade fan. The thing weighs a thousand pounds. I looked at it and I go forty bucks. I go man, this sells for about one hundred and eighty dollars. So I look at the guy. I go. Man, I love this fan. Your fan is gorgeous. I go, it's awesome. And I look at it and I touch it a little bit. I walk away and I go, man, would you? Uh, I go, man, I like that fan at forty, but I said I don't think that's my number. I was like, my number's thirty. What would? What do you think about that? Do you think that's? You, you think you could do that? And he him hauled around and he's like, yeah, I'll take it because that dude needed some cigarette money and that's what <laughs> and, and, and and that's what we're about. I'm like, I'm helping people, helping people. I so, like. My number is. <laughs> I'm gonna steal that. I think. Yeah. Don't they? Don't they? Don't they call those rummage sales out there in Missouri? No, they're yard sales. Like a rummage sale is what you have at a church. Yeah. A rummage sale, like the lingo is, a yard sale is a yard sale. Like Jim Bob throws the stuff out, has his bass boat sitting out there, and you price it and you sell it. A rummage sale is like a church where, like, a lot of people bring stuff together and they sell for a cause. And then you have an estate sale, which is something that's very seldom. It's starting to come into the area. They call it tag sales. Traditionally, an estate sale here is done at an auction to where the auction company comes in. They set up tables. You bring everything inside your house, outside your house, and wow. they sell it on your front lawn. And it is absolutely fantastic. That's crazy. And I find that nobody has these anywhere. So I'm going to start recording some of this with my GoPro and start uploading this to my YouTube channel because apparently this is something that doesn't happen too often. So that so that's the old farm style auction. They still have them there. Yep, D's auction company. Yep. They're yeah, they're that's really awesome. Yeah, they 
And so for the most part, like we, I go to St. Louis and I'll do thrifts up there, but it's a tough place to buy from. You got to get there and you got to really know your weird stuff. I'm a weird buyer and that's the stuff that I sell and make really good money. I went to a, I went to a thrift shop and bought a, a, a prosthetic leg and I paid 25 bucks for it and I flipped it for $275. Right. That's, that's a bad, that's a bad term. I shouldn't say flipped it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, like and I, I will admit yeah. when I was in St. Louis, the bins were amazing, but I went to like 10, Eight seven eight thrift stores and I didn't buy in nothing anything. You got to know where they're at, man. I should have been there with yep. you, bro. I let you down. I could have taken. I, I could have taken you to the Jewish <laughs> thrift shop down in Ladue, and we would have murdered it. You would have walked in there and have been like, "The hills are alive," because <laughs> that place is money. It's just crazy stuff. They they well, had. Well, shoes. John, I want you, I want you to do something for me, John. Uh, I'm sorry, bro. I'm, I'm, a, I'm talkative. No, 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 no. no that's that, that, that's great. I want you to do something <laughs> for me. I want you to go oh, after. Um, it could, it doesn't have to be deer season, but I, I'm all about like, you know, like sh when Shane was over in St. Louis, he was eating Emo's pizzas and sending me pictures. <laughs> oh man, that's horrible, Shane. I know. No, it was, it was bad. He, I said, if he goes to Ted Drew's and eats a blizzard. Uh, <laughs> You know, I'm a disowning, but <laughs> next, next, next time you're over in Cape Girardeau, yes, I, I need, I need some overly sausage. I can, Hey now, brother. Hey, I, I'm friends with the Oberlies. They're from, they're, they're St. Genevieve natives. Yeah. I have a buddy. I have a buddy. He has a YouTube channel. His name's Jason static. He lives in St. Gen. You awesome. shoot me. Yeah. Get, you, somebody you hook shoot, me up. Is that you shoot me. <laughs> Message me your address and I will mail you some Oberly sausage. Good. That stuff that, will last for you could send it to Helen that, back and it'd be that, good enough to oh, eat. <laughs> that is some good and, and I tell and the Oberlies, you, it's good that you know they are quality just generation of generation of quality people. It's they really, are great I mean, people. They are, they are they're just uh, good wholesome Midwestern yeah, and Saint Genevieve is uh, you know the the, the French uh, background. Yeah. Catholics, yeah, a, lot really. of, a lot of Catholics. Catholics. Mm -hmm. Valley of Saint Jen, they were the bane of everyone's existence. All the good <laughs> kids that could play, yep. all the good kids that could play sports in Saint Jen were always Catholic, and they went to Valley. And when they would come to Fredericktown, they would stomp us. <laughs> I'd be like, so now how far? Was, how far are you from um, Farmington? Oh golly, about, I'm just that's that's like five, thirty miles, and yeah, no, we're we're fifteen. We're 15 miles. If you're coming into Fredericktown, where the overpass is there, I'm sure that you're like, what the, I don't know. But off, I live off right of 60, there. Off of 67. Yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. I know. That, I, oh, see, we turned that, we took <laughs> off that overpass. Excuse me, guys, while we talk some hometown stuff. <laughs> uh, we we take that overpass. Uh, yeah, this was back before you guys were even born. We took that overpass. We went over to Doe Run. That's that's where yeah. you know we we went through Doe Run and and um, yeah that's all that a, area you know. yeah yeah they they uh, that place has really grown up now they've actually got an outdoor flea market there on W and um, they what they would do there is they I find a lot of cool stuff there man I go up there, there was, and kill it there was what, growing up there was six people in Doe Run when I went through there almost fr Farmington and Doe Run they there's some there's some space in there. But along Highway W, there they almost touch. Yeah, they they. Well, there's. I'm I'm talking about you know I'm I'm the age of y'all's grandparents, so. Oh, you're so. talking about last week. <laughs> I'm talking about this. Yeah, this was like in the 1800s. As, as Eight, Shane oh, gives it goes. Yeah. yeah. Shane said, were, "Wow, that was a long time ago." That was a, that was a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. Russ yeah, remembers back cool. then. Man, I'm jealous. I, I I need to come up with some places in California that you guys are going to be jealous about eating at or not eating at, I should say. Hey, I told I'm Russ I would. I told Russ I'd try to ship him an Emo's pizza, but I couldn't guarantee the condition it was going to be in when it got there. You could, yeah. You could, hey, have you ever had um um have you ever had? Oh golly, what's the name of the pizza joint? It come back to me. I'll think of it. I it just was right there. It was a little thin crust pizza place. 
and it was not like emos, but emos is it was uh St. Louis style pizza. Oh, nothing beats emos though. No, no, nothing beats emos, but man, this is close, especially for the price. We used to go there. My dad worked at Terminal Railroad over in Illinois. This is the craziest <laughs> story, dude. He worked at Terminal Railroad over in Illinois. And um, he took me to work with him twice and put me on the train. Like, could you wow. imagine how many how many OSHA <laughs> violations you would get now? You would yeah. go to prison. You'd you go are. to child and yeah. But um, but we would always stop and get Emo's pizza and we'd eat it on the train. That was the that was the that was the coolest thing ever. Russ, next time so, I'm over in St. Louis, I'll get you a bottle of the dressing and ship it to you. There you go. There you go. That, now, it, you know, there are really cheap flights from from St. Louis to Savannah now, summertime, a Legion Air yeah. type thing. Really? So, yeah, you could just, boom, hop on a flight. I, I can't fly like I used to, so so I uh, you, you guys would have to bring me that pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Oberly's, uh, yeah, Oberly's pizza. So, so yeah, the, the best thing, the best pizza, thing about Oberly is that you could pack that with some dry ice and you could overnight it, and you're perfectly oh, yeah. fine. Yeah, you could. But, but you know we used to, pizza. we used to, yeah, we used to hang it in the garage in the in the yeah. wintertime. Wow. Yeah. 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 So it was. No, I know that was back. With, uh, that was back pizza. before we had refrigerations, Shane. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we figured out what the summer slowdown is. Good food. <laughs> That's good food. Isn't it? All right. All right. No, but you you did hit on something. There are a lot of sellers slow down. It isn't really that. Uh, it isn't really that there's a lot. There is some slowdown, but a lot of it is. It is our fault because we don't list as much. We get preoccupied with outdoor activities. Kids got games. It's barbecue. It's swimming. It's vacation. And I really think that has a lot to do with it. To be consistent at this game, what I suggest is that we only take vacations in January and fly to really nice places like mm -hmm. Canada. Key I don't West. Know. Yeah. Canada. Key West. Canada. <laughs> in January, he's got a, it's not nice. Let's go to California. Let's all we'll yeah, go out to Bo's. We'll go we'll go, we'll go hit up all the, the garage sales in California, all of us. Right. You, you know, John, you, you really hit on a point though, John. It's something that I I I have to tell myself every day. I am in control of how many sales my business has. I'm in control how many I list. You know, mm -hmm. and, and it is. It's you, we humans tend to look for the for the excuses we we constantly you're like well it's summer slowdown well yeah. it's this or my inventory's stale or my inventory says it is nobody's fault or nobody's um yep. you know it's it's nobody but yourself in, well, the, in this business and that's the thing is if you're slowing down in the summer maybe no one wants to buy your items so source and I know this is like brutal truth. Source different items. Go out and research some golf clubs. Research different stuff. I've been selling golf stuff like crazy this week. Right. You know, yeah, that's what I I I'm wrote sorry, that in chat. I'm sorry. I wrote I wrote that in chat. I had actually picked up a set of ping zings black dots today, a set of nine Whoa. of them. And Those I paid nice. six bucks. I said I paid six bucks a piece for them. And the lady's husband did all kinds of golf stuff. She had these. She didn't know what they were worth. She wanted ten bucks a piece for them. And I'm like, ah, I can't really do that. I was just up front. I'm like, lady, I'm a reseller, and I just I can't at that price. It's too much money. And she said, How about six? And I pulled out my calculator and did some configurations. And I'm like, I can do six. And I bought them. Well, she had some Callaway X2s that were sweet with like a ping. Uh, wood and some other stuff, and I'm like, "Well, yeah. how much is this bag?" And she goes, three hundred dollars." And I go, uh, "You have a nice day." <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I, I mean, I got two golf clubs from the St. Louis downtown bins. One was a vintage one, and I sold it for forty nine ninety nine. And the other one was a uh, Big Bertha, and I sold that for forty seven ninety nine. And this goes back to something that Mo taught me about. Don't be afraid of shipping that big stuff, people. Mm -hmm. You know, don't it, it, golf clubs are weird. Yes, they are weird to ship, but they're not any different to pack. And I mean, go back and watch that video about Mo Mo packing stuff, and you know how how he does. I I shipped a golf club 
uh, I guess a week and a half ago in a poly bag. But I had three inches of, of, of yeah. uh, bubble wrap around like, it. So it I was, was like, what? <laughs> yeah. I need, you know, to, yeah. I need to watch that video. Uh, <laughs> my, my favorite way to ship golf clubs is to get those triangle things from the post office, the priority priority ones. And if they're too long, if the golf clubs are too long, I'll stick it in, uh, and then I will cut one in half, and then just fit it over it Make and tape it around. Way. Yep. I saw I saw one guy uh, shift one in a noodle, the pool pool thing. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. and that's kind of where I got the. Uh, I tried to do everything in a poly bag. Some of my big electronics you can, of course, but you know, and and I I go out with stuff, and if, and Mo, I want to always give you accolades on this. My feedback, majority of things they say about the feed on my feedback is packed expertly, and I want to write them back and go tell Mo, tell Mo, because that's you know that's who taught me that. The thing I and they do. Say, it's like yeah, exactly. The thing I always say about packing is people want to make it look pretty, and I think maybe on certain platforms like Poshmark and stuff that's awesome but with something fragile i'd rather have it packed well and be ugly as hell than be broken when i get it and i think any customer would too broken mo, and that's, pretty that's, yeah mo that's 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 the that's my life's motto <laughs> that's <laughs> you're right i mean that's it don't matter what it looks like as long as it gets there in one piece exactly and when somebody <laughs> complains then they go you sent me an item in a used box. I come at them with this angle. Well, you know what, man? I love the environment. And if I can recycle a box, I save a whale. Exactly. Yep. Yep. I get my boxes Thanks. from the Pier 1 dumpster, and they all say Pier 1 on them. So, oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, see, it. It wasn't for, I'll tell you a story about people complaining. Walmart used to give out free boxes. This is probably going back 15 years, something like that. Because they had to. They had X amount they used for certain pallets. Once they're done, they had to give them out. Somebody went and stole a pallet of Walmart boxes, cut their finger on it, uh, sued, and that's why you don't get free Walmart boxes anymore. I believe right. it. I would totally believe it. But I will, give a, I will give yeah. a quick tip. Go into your Walmart at night. Find out when they do their trucks at my Walmart about nine o'clock at night. If I go over there, they'll be stocking the shelves on certain nights. Normally Wednesday, Tuesday, Wednesday nights, they're HBA items. And those little HBA boxes are freaking phenomenal for shipping little stuff. You can fill a cart up with them. And if you got a good rapport, you just play it cool with your people. Be like, hey, yo, I, I'm saving you guys some work. I'm going to score these boxes. That way you ain't got to take them back and fill your baler up with them. And they're like, whatever, man. They're just people like us. They don't care. Save them some work, and they're going to let you walk out the store with them. It's cool. Oh, yeah. You have to inventory that stuff because places like Walmart that have millions of items or whatever it is, they don't want to carry. They want it gone. So that extra pack, you just save them who knows how much time by taking it off their hands. Right. And then right. I'll give two tips that could help. I don't know if it's a county thing, but at least in my county in the Bay Area, you can, if you have some kind of an office or even a storage unit with an address, anything, you can sign up to be a recycle center. I think that's what they call it. And you can put a Craigslist ad saying, I'm a recycle center for whatever city, USA. And I, I get, I would, I'll recycle your packing peanuts, your boxes, your styrofoam, name whatever you want, your pallets, because I used to do this. And then people, I would literally have people come in and say, I, I just had a wedding, we've got all these boxes, you said you recycle them. What do you want? And this lady had a truck, a U-Haul truck full of these white boxes. They're all white wow. for some reason. Wow. So they must have come from the same store or something. Packing peanuts, bubble wrap, boxes. So That's anyone crazy. can do this. Just check with your county. And as long as you have somewhere for them to come, you can do that. And then- and that, um, That's a resell. You know, those uh, supplies, you can also resell. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Pe peanuts on eBay go crazy. And See, then that, that brings me oh. to my second point. Sorry. Pack, oh, no. Go ahead. A lot of companies are banning the use of packing peanuts. Like Amazon doesn't let you ship them. Huh. Right. So you can look in your Craigslist, your local area, for companies that – because they have to pay to recycle these. They have to pay to get rid of them. If you can use those packing peanuts for free – I've done it before. i just gone to my local area, looked in Craigslist, and it said, you know, 50 bags of packing peanuts. Come and get them. 
a lot of companies that have all this can so you can get that for free look them up that's 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 awesome and that's a really good idea mo like that's a really good idea um I'm super cheap, so I like all this stuff. I just I just go to the Pier One dumpster and literally get all their bubble wrap in their in their boxes. And there that's you go. that's what I do. Literally literally. Because Pier One, they get so much so many breakables in, they have bubble wrap for days. And like styrofoam pieces and everything. And when you do when you overuse that, I've only had one guy say it was a little overpacked. But mm. when you when you overuse that uh, again, going back to the psychology, you know, when they get it, uh, you know, I shrink wrap everything. I bubble wrap and then I shrink wrap it. And if it's, yep. if it's two or three parts, I shrink wrap <laughs> each part individually and then, you know, break it in like that. There's a psychology of the human mind of going like, ooh, and, and the excitement of they've gotten this. Think about the person that gets that package. You know, they, they've spent their money to get your, your item. And they get it, and it's oh, it's nice. And then they're opening it up, and it's it's like Christmas all over again for them. You know, if they open the box up and it's got uh, some mm -hmm. paper in it, and they go, ah, there it is. They get more, ex you know, it kind of feeds to their excitement level. Right. So it, mm -hmm. Yeah. It, and they'll give you. I I think I get. I've definitely gotten better feedback by having better packaging. Oh yeah. And yeah. And a lot of times, what I do is I get a lot of the. You know, I get a fifty dollar ebay store coupon every month so i'll buy the ebay packing tape and i'll just cover the words up with the tape on the box yeah yeah you know i i don't ship it out with the words on it i'll cover it up with a sticky label or um but a lot of the boxes i get from there are, are just blank so so yeah i yeah, I'm, I'm with y'all i don't think people very few people care about the look of the mm -hmm. box. You know, it's the inside that counts. Um, I, That's what my wife I said. My, uh, <laughs> I know. I knew somebody was going to go there as soon as that. Yeah. <laughs> Where's the drum rim? <laughs> rim, rim my, wife's, shot, right? my wife's way prettier than me. <laughs> I win. She lost. Sorry, she, lo she lost. <laughs> She lost. Good. We both were decent looking in high school, and she was gorgeous, and I was eh, that's okay for a dude. And man, woo, guys, I see guys staring at my wife, and they look at me like, "What in the world did that did get? What did he do? He must be rich or something." He must be. <laughs> 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 yeah, we, we, I, I tell you, I, there's not a guy at, at the face of America right now that's not thinking like you do, John. Because when we when we start aging. We don't age. They age so good, and we don't. <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's, here's the deal, and I don't mean this with any disrespect, but it's the only way I can put it out there. Um, if you have a, a house and you're able to keep painting it and put fix the shutters and, and you put work into it, you know, that's what women do to their appearance, the creams and, and everything. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. what we do is we're like, hell with it. Just slap some siding up on it, and a hundred years down the road, it better still be up. You know, that's that's, that's rub why some women dirt on forever. it. You know that you rub but, some, uh, spit in it and just rub it in. Yeah, spit on it, rub some dirt. It'd be yeah, <laughs> clean that shirt off. It's good. But isn't that isn't that a good lesson for a guy? I mean, look what Shane did. Uh, Shane, you you're feeding that. You know, you're you're doing not feeding it, but you're you're capitalizing on that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. You, yeah, so and and that's that's just smart. That's smart business. That's actually one of the few things us men need to mm -hmm. step up and and get. And now I know the young. I think Mo, you've probably seen it more so out in California. I think it's kind of the, and it's been around for a while. The metro, um, the metro where the men are now getting more and more into skincare and yeah and yeah. Uh, yeah. In the Bay Area, so you can't not see that. <laughs> So. Well, true, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I mean, but uh, so you know, men they're coming out with more and more men products for, for I hair. Mean, there's skincare. beard, there's beard oils, there's yeah. all sorts of stuff. And if you want to wholesale that stuff, like I'm actually approved for a company that does beard oils, and they're pretty high, and the margins are low. But there are companies you can get in with that just 
you can buy it by the gallon jug and then bottle it yourself. It's crazy. Oh, nice. So you can break it down. Yeah. Yep. No, it makes sense. So, I mean, the the market for that kind of stuff just what was it the Dollar Shave Club. They're yeah. like billionaires now. Yeah. Coming out with something that we've been using for thousands of years already, just cheaper. Yeah. Put it in a I'm, little box and ship it every every month. You, you know, a monthly monthly subscription and genius. genius. I'm actually I'm actually, I'm actually the month club. Personally. I'm actually I'm actually going to um, subscribe to the Dollar Shave Club. Tell me how my that wife, goes. I'm gonna. I was my thinking. Wife, of, my wife did. I don't know why she has so many razors. She opens up a drawer <laughs> and they just surprise razors. See, I'm going to because when you shave your head, oh man, you go through so many razors. A couple a week, you know, or a couple every two weeks. So. Yeah, I. You know. Tell me about it. I, I, <laughs> I would go through some razor shaving my head, wouldn't I? Yeah. But yeah, yeah. even, you know, it, what are some of the other ideas? You know, wasn't there a, there was a, a bow tie club that kind of, I don't know if it took off, you know, some of those other men's type areas that go. One, and, one thing that I've seen and I love, I wear these is, is patterned dress socks. And yep. there for a while, there was a, a company that did like a, a sort of a, like a box like that, kind of. And, you know, we're, we're talking about summer slowdown and we're now we're talking about men's stuff. We're missing, we haven't spoke about the big day in June that can mm -hmm. help cure some of that summer slowdown. Father's Day. That's right. Yep. <laughs> Everybody yep. gets socks and ties. Socks and ties. Everybody. Let's make it a fifty dollars sock and a fifty dollar tie. Yep. I There's told my wife, when I die, if you bury me in a tie, I'll come back and haunt you. <laughs> I hate putting on a tie. It just doesn't work just right around here. And there's there's pairs of socks out there. Like I got a pair of Bugatti socks and they're like thirty dollars a pair, literally. And I wouldn't have bought them, but they were a gift. So I kept them. Bugatti. <laughs> That even sounds rich. Yeah. So I got you. Is it I got you? I got you or we got you? What? We got you. Is that? You. But you know, there's always something too. And if if you know, you, I always try to get these points out and come. Look at vehicles. There's your everyday driver. There's your mid. You know, your mid price, and then there's your luxury models. Yep. There's even in socks. There's that. There's your everyday white socks that you get at Walmart. A hundred of them for a dollar fifty. You know. And then you've got your nicer socks and you got your thirty dollar Bugatti socks. Somebody out there is is buying those thirty dollar socks. Oh yeah. So don't yeah. so don't ever discount the higher end stuff. Check check this out, and I want to show you guys. I already got it listed. Okay. All right. These are <coughs> our socks, right? And they're just wool socks. They're made by Acorn. When you flip them over, they're a slipper. Huh. And I scanned these at a yard sale and about dropped dead on the ground. They comp anywhere from about forty to fifty dollars. Nice. And I and I bought them for five, and I listed them for forty one ninety five, and they will eventually sell. But they're a higher end, like sock brand. And, and it's called the Slipper Sock, and it's designed in Maine. In Maine, and I guess astronauts also wear these. <laughs> astronaut socks. They're out of this world. <laughs> but that's what they say. Designed in Maine and loved by astronauts. They sell like crazy for a super high value. Jeez. I never find anything like that. I, I find I, – I, I will say, though, and here's a bolo, that if you go to your Goodwills or your thrift shops – Always look in the men's underwear section because some of the old, like, tidy whities sell for crazy money. Just look yeah, them up. Nice. Especially nice. if you find them sealed, like socks and sealed. <laughs> and I heard Shane talk about this before. Old shirts, old cotton shirts, because people buy them uh, with a certain tags in them because they can make reproduction concert shirts. Yep. And I guess they're trying to pass them as the real thing. I don't know. I don't, yeah. I don't ask questions. I, I picked several up that were like vintage. Uh, I have a couple listed right now um, that are like, I found one that's like a vintage, maybe Hanes, and it's like 70s, 
50 50 and it has the tag and i've sold a couple for like 24 bucks and i bought them for like 50 cents yeah some of those sealed underwear uh, fruit of the looms i've seen them 100 150 yeah on up yeah you know that that somebody if, if that's your brand and you can't get them anymore you're willing mm -hmm. to pay that wait wait you yep. said 150 dollars for a pair of fruit of the looms Oh, well, yeah. for a, pa a package of like sealed through the loom, three to five packages. Yeah. Oh, yeah, look it up, Mo. It, it's it's absolute. You would think no way in the world nope. would, but but uh, sealed old uh, socks, underwear, like Shane was saying, and wow. it, some of them can just go absolutely yeah. through the roof. Even like the vintage like boxer shorts, but they didn't call them boxer shorts or like sleeping shorts or whatever. <laughs> Those sell for crazy money, and they're just like a regular old-looking blue, nothing special. Yeah. Wow. I, yeah, you'd be surprised at some of the stuff that's out there. Um, what was it? I was, uh, I went today, and I there was a pile of the same place I got the blast the brass bladed fan. There was a pile of black shirts, and I'm attracted to black shirts like a moth to a flame now. And I walked over there, and I started digging through, and there's this other. It's a funny story. I seen this other guy, and I can pick a reseller out. They just give themselves away to me every time. <laughs> and there were there were two yards sales side by side, and I seen him coming from this when he walked to his car, and he started walking towards that one. So I was like, Shh. I was recording with my camera. So I jump out and I run over to that yard sale real quick to get ahead of him because I'm competitive, and I start digging through these pile of black T-shirts, and I found two concert Slipknot T-shirts from like the late '90s. And oh. I threw them over my sh yeah. I threw them over my shoulder, and then there was a Black Sabbath shirt, and I pull it out, and I've been watching a lot of Shane stuff, and I'm like, that's repop, and I threw it down, and I go, how much are these t-shirts? And that guy goes three bucks a piece, and uh, the other reseller reaches out and snags that Black Sabbath, picks it up, and you could just see he's like, oh, it's a repop. Oh, and threw it back man. down. I was like, sorry, Charlie, because as I when I said, hey, how much are your t-shirts here? He start looking, and he's he. I could tell he wanted to try to scoot in on me, but he didn't know he didn't know what kind of trouble he was going to get in if he did that. Those Slipknot shirts will sell really good. The nineties, yeah, I'll take some, man. I'll take some pictures and send them to you. They're cool. Yeah, I want to see them, man. They're super, like, and especially like insane clown posse, like the true vintage shirts. They sell like crazy, right? Yeah, the Juggalos are nuts. Yep. Let me ask you a question about that. Have you ever sold any that look like they're repops, but like you said, with a T-shirt, when they, they redid it on a, a vintage blank T-shirt and they redid it over there? Have you ever sold one of those? No, but I have sold some vintage knockoffs. And so Liquid Blue is one of the T-shirt brand names that came out and they started like repopping shirts back in the 80, late 80s and early 90s. And I sold this one Kiss t-shirt, and it was like a 90s Kiss t-shirt by Liquid Blue, and it was glow in the dark. And they're not concert shirts. They're just repops, but it sold for like 30 bucks hmm. just because it's a vintage repop. <laughs> nice. Gotcha. Nice. Oh, that's good. Okay. So, all right, go ahead. Oh, sorry. I'm good. Um, go ahead. What I, what I was going to say is about – when it comes to the summer slowdown, um, have you guys ever thought about, you know what, take a break in terms of I'm going to stop everything for like, not just a vacation, but like I'm going to take a couple of days just to refocus. I'm not going to do any reselling. I'm going to do something else. I'm going to go, you know, fix my shed or something just to kind of refocus, to kind of reset everything. Is that ever like you've like hit a wall basically, or is that mm. something you don't think about? Sometimes for me, I, I, for me, I work a full-time job and I do reselling part-time, but I really do it full-time too because I, I put in full-time hours, 40 or more a week. And um, I think that I take a couple days sometimes to kind of do that. Yeah. I'll play. I'll to. play. Yeah. Mo, do you find – now, I would feel it'd be easier for you to kind of – break away you've got young children yeah and 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 shane same way you've got young children so does that kind of help you to kind of break away when you know go spend time with the kids take them to their ball game take them to their soccer game so it kind of breaks you because that's something 
I'm struggling with. We hit the ground March 13th here in Savannah. That weekend we went to the parade and we've literally not slowed down or stopped since then. So it's like just the other day I was like, we went to the beach for an hour one day, about an hour, hour and a half. And well, I'm that's like, no way to live. <laughs> well, it, <laughs> it is because, because, uh, what well, you know, to me, and to me, it's still better than I don't wake up. I don't have to go to the corporate job. I don't have to wear the tie anymore, yeah. you know, but I'm constantly thinking, I'm constantly researching, I'm constantly looking, uh, because, you know, here, <laughs> Facebook is becoming a major source for me. And so both as far as sell and buy. So I'm, I'm constantly watching for that. Nick. So I've, I've always got it. Mm -hmm. I don't do TV, so I don't have that, you know, that, that breakaway points, so to speak. So, you know, this yeah. is this, I'm glad you asked this Mo, because this is something I've been that there's times where you got to just stop and take a day. Yep. Oh yeah, and and me, I like to go fishing, so I'll go fishing. You know, I wanna, um, I wanna show something real quick about the concert T-shirts. I have a couple here. Here's a nice new. I don't know if you can see it too well, but here's a nice new Kiss shirt. You can oh, see yeah. how nice, how nice the black is. Nice and sharp. When you look inside of them, there's no tag. It's got a printed label. Now here's how you can't. Here's how you know your shirt is real. And this is how you know. You can't fake this. I mean, I guess you could, but it wouldn't be worth the effort. Look how faded this one is. That's an old kiss. It's faded. It's from the late 90s. It's got the old anvil tag in it. I don't know if you can yeah. see that too well. But yeah. um, this it's double-sided. It's got that dark, gr gr almost gray-black. Mm -hmm. um, if, 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 like, if it has an anvil tag and it says tear-away... It's not vintage. <laughs> yeah. And it's got that slight grade to it. So that's one thing you can't do with the shirts unless you claim that it was a maybe dead stock or something like that. You could sell it as new, but, but yeah. Hey, Shane, what kind of fish do you like to, man, I bass, you bass or you bass? I, I bass okay. fish a lot. Yeah. I got a bunch of, t a couple tackle boxes and three or four rods and small so mouth I, or, or large mouth or both. Large mouth, for the most part, there's not too many lakes in Illinois with small mouth, but there's one power plant lake near towards St. Louis, actually, that has some small mouth. Well, and... that, that, okay, that's true. I, I forget that you're over on that side. Yeah. You got to go over to John's because down there, that's some yep. great small mouth fishing. But small there. mouth, oh man, it's, yeah. it's small mouth fishing is the best. It is the best. What about you, John? What's your, what's your go to kind of relaxation? Um, I love watching YouTube videos. I actually found you guys when you interviewed, was it, was it Lonnie garage flips? Did you guys re interview him? Yeah. Yeah. Mo did. Yeah. That might've been, that might've been when I started following you guys. I watch a lot of YouTube. Um, I, I uh, watch a lot of, that's pretty much it. I don't really have too many hobbies. I love, I love what I do for a living. My hobby is finding gold stuff. This is, uh, a little kiwi that I got from a yard sale that came all the way from uh, New Zealand. Like, how cool is that? Like, little little um, hardwood kiwi. That's cool. Out of one yeah, carb. Cool. <laughs> is, that, yeah. is that a and one I, carb or? It looks like it. It's all one piece. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's made by the uh, the mem mem the memory the uh, the people that do the the war chant that's real popular right now. That people. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, the, uh, the New Zealand. Yeah. Um, the blacks, the New Zealand blacks, they do that dance. Yeah. yeah, we have a pond right out here, and it's stocked full of catfish. So, Shane, you come on down. There's some bass in there. Bring bring the family, and uh, we can just go fishing. Um, it's awesome. not big, but there are there are there's a lot there's not really there's probably more fishing in your area yeah. i don't really fish a whole lot i'm i'm too uh i need instant gratification so yeah. i want i can't i can't sit there i don't drink so like sitting there on the riverbank you know my buddies they all drink so i go with them and i'm the designated driver so when we go fishing they just end up getting slobber knocked and i end up driving well, them home we'll come down for a weekend we'll come down for a weekend we'll go fishing and then we'll go thrifting how about that? that? That would be, there's some cool places around here for sure. 
John, I, sure. I got a I, I got a solution for your for your problem like that. When they're when you're going out fishing, make sure yeah. it's a stream. Make sure it's a stream or a river, and you start catching them by hand. <laughs> Man, you talk about excitement. You know, you start. You know, if you ever watched them now down in the south, they do the noodling. Oh, well, they you know, noodling, the yeah. Yeah, but, I, you know, I, go down. I get and, a big old cotton mouth. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm terrified of snakes, so I don't do that. I don't stick my hands where I can't see them when it's underwater. Oh, we used to catch uh, tr trout and um, the smallmouth and little bluegills that way at the Black River. Down. Holy yeah. cow! You must be like a ninja. You well, I was young. Me, I, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't care. I just was like, man, we, we'd reach under the thing, <laughs> grab things. I wasn't. I, did, I was too stupid. You know. <laughs> But for me, for the most part, I like to travel a lot. We do want to come down to Tybee Island, so it's glad I'm glad to know we have a place to stay now. If we you know, if absolutely, we to, absolutely, you no, know, our B and B is uh, always open. We uh, we have I we want to come down to Tybee Island. We love it. We just came down, man. I it's it broke my heart because we were just in Helen, Georgia, and I heard it got flooded. And that place is gorgeous, man. There's just so much in Georgia, and I'm not trying to. My heart's in Georgia. I'm, I'm definitely, I'm definitely miserable here in Missouri. <laughs> Come on, Pac-Man. Hey, I see, I see Pac-Man's in the chat. Pac-Man, how's it going? Mo, what's your, what's kind of your go-to? I know you, you're, you're constantly on the go. See, he just, he just is on the go right now. He's, go, <laughs> he's, he's so gone. gone. <laughs> he's so gone. He had to go. He go, slipped go, out. Go, we didn't gone. even notice. Go, go, go. He said, I, I don't even get to talk. It's that <laughs> fat dude with the ear it's, on. It's Somebody my show. Get out of here. <laughs> yeah, both sitting there going, it's my show, and these three guys have taken over. I can't screw it. I'm out. Okay. Horrible. Mo, <laughs> yeah. come back. He went, he Maybe went come back. Pizza. He's watching soccer on the TV right He's now. Watching He's watching soccer. Like, oh, oh. That's what <laughs> I know but, his uh, – I know, you know, he – with his kids are because Shane, yours, uh, yours, or what'd you say? Six and nine. Yeah. Six and nine. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I think his oldest is six now. Yeah. So, he has his hands. So, yeah. He has his hands full for sure. He does. Especially with so, the moving I, too. Moving's brutal. He, and he heard all that though. <laughs> that was awesome, Mo. I was like, I said, Mo, you're always on the move. What do you, what's your go-to? And we all looked, and you're gone. And you're just a chair. Incredible. go-to with that move. It's kind of like, uh, we just there's so much stuff to do. Uh, and like and Mo, but, not uh, only did you did you move, you're you're also transitioning. To, yeah, you know, you've, the you've office shut your one business down. Yeah. Oh yeah, this is my first week without an office and a house. So right. like, we're getting our key. We got the keys, uh, but I'm gonna have no office since the first time in like 15 years. Wow. Yeah, and it's kind of like actually that's why I ran outside because we have limited parking spaces around here. So I ran down to save the parking spot because my wife's gonna park there. Otherwise, it's like a mile down the road. So we're all kind of. On top oh of wow! Right wow! That's crazy. So, oh, yeah, that's after good. a little bit, it'll be okay. See, that's that's one thing though is moving with your spouse could lead to divorce because me and my wife, when we moved into our house, we were fighting. Moving is stressful. Yes, you know what I mean. And then you're trying to like help each other move stuff, and you're yelling at each other, and it's just like you know, it is. Uh, and then you're like living around boxes in boxes. Yep. Next it's time tough. I move. I'm hiring a moving company. Done. <laughs> I got you beat, me... dude. I said when we move, we're selling everything. <laughs> I said that. everything, I like John. That's everything. That's... We're having an auction. Yeah, and we're Best getting in move. our car. We're getting. I have a van. I have a, a 2004 GMC, huge conversion van, and maybe get a trailer and haul my wife's Mustang. And we're heading to Georgia, and we're gonna have the clothes on our backs and some changes of clothes. And our important papers, and that's it, computer. Mm -hmm. John, we got I when can't... we moved from here, we were in Savannah before we moved here to Mobile, Alabama. And then we moved the big, all everything. When I when we moved from Mobile to Florida, I said, no more. And we went to a five by nine open trailer. 
And then we yeah. moved from Florida to be on the road. We got everything down to a, a Jeep Liberty. Holy uh, cow. Yeah. When you guys say like moving stressful, not anymore yeah. because we just sell it all. And yeah. <laughs> so See, it, it, uh, that's it, the, that's the thing. It's there's yeah. no need. There's no need for st I'm not a big stuff kind of guy. I do like some stuff, but the stuff that I like is really small and it's not really big. Um, I like old photographs and stuff, stuff that this is something that I have that I would absolutely love to. This is in New York. This is the Ophelium Theater, and it's a black and white photo of it, and it still exists up there. And here's a picture. Wow. They would love to have this stuff. It's so cool. Um, it's even got the – it's in the letter with the letterhead, and I've saved this forever. It's got a little uh, – um, a little New York uh, notice of enrollment under military law. It's got somebody's paper that I guess they registered for the draft, and oh, it's wow. really cool. Like, I, cool. I don't. I, I'm pretty sure they're they're not here anymore, so it's safe to show it. Um, but I love little stuff like this, and anything that I have, I could pack. We could we could probably do the trailer, just do everything in a trailer, and then we'd be fine. Yeah, I amazing. would sell my inventory and start over and everything. It, it's literally amazing. It, it's been an amazing time for us because one, we went down to 300, 320 square feet mobile in a, in a coach. And then when we, when we oh. decided to come back to Savannah, we sold that and we've been, now we got here and we literally furnished our place for like 300 bucks because we're constantly on the, on the hunt for, for furniture. And you, we saw it. And it was, and we're not, it, it's not, you know, I don't look, it doesn't look like uh, we're in a dorm room. I mean, we've got Ashley furniture. We've got, what's the other one? Bassett furniture, rooms to go stuff. And literally found them for pennies on the dollar. Yeah. I mean, wow. it, funny, Russ, Russ told me when I uh, told him I was about moving, he's all, you know what? Just what John said, sell everything right now. Forget yeah. about all of it. Get rid of it all. And I did for, I want to say I got rid of about 60 to 70%, but that 30%, um, I shouldn't have even kept that. But actually, most, most of that, what I kept that was my personal possessions is like old high school newspapers, mm -hmm. old like pictures, like, you know. Old, your life. Yeah, mementos. Yeah, yeah mementos of your life. Yeah, you yeah. can't replace those. Yeah, exactly. You can't. Can. I'm not right. gonna. I'm not gonna sell like my my kids' baby pictures and stuff like that. Exactly. Right. Right. But there's certain yeah. things that I have. Like I'll show you this. I've never showed anyone this before, but this is really cool. This is a picture of John oh, F. Kennedy. JFK. Wow. And no, this was in 1960. It was shot over in Belleville, Illinois. This is the only picture of him that exists like that. Oh, it wow. was just somebody. Right. Somebody was was uh that close to him could you imagine being that close to barack obama or donald trump and be able to get such a candid photo like that that's crazy and, well and that's in 1960 he was a candidate he wasn't president and yeah yeah you know yeah yeah and you think about like uh the access to those candidates even back then were his brother in 1968 when he was shot and killed you know he had like two football players as his security that was it so yeah. you literally could walk up to these guys back then and, you know, take that picture and stand. And now you can't get close to them at all. Yeah. And even the, even no. the candidates, the top candidates. So, cause does it, does it have a month on it, John? Uh, it just says Belleville 1960 on the back. You might okay. be able to look well, he, he, he was, a, he wasn't, he wasn't installed in president until January of 61. It has so, a couple of candidates. Yeah, he definitely camps. can it. I, I love it. So cool. It Pac is cool. Man, Pac Man has a question: Is uh, what are you doing with inventory when you move? And when I moved, I just you hauled my inventory. But for me, what I plan I, to do when I move is I'm going to liquidate. I'm going to plan forward, and I'm going to start marking things down until I get rid of everything. Because when we sell, we sell our farm. I literally owe seventeen thousand dollars on this property. And I think it's probably worth somewhere between three hundred and fifty to about four hundred thousand dollars is what I would like to get out of it. So like we'll have enough money when we move to Georgia to buy a nice house and then to reestablish my inventory, which 
would be awesome. That'd be cool. Start from scratch, ground zero, and do everything right. Right. Make. Yeah. yeah. I had some inventory that I had in the in the uh, RV, and I even brought some to Savannah, uh, but it was high value, small inventory. I had you know like some uh, uh, radiator, uh, not but uh, alt, an alternator, some parts like that. But also when I in Florida, I sold out to a, I. I knew what I had in the pile. I knew I, what I had made out of my death piles, and I found another reseller, and he he bought he bought it to help his brother start out. And we've actually had that reseller on the show, so it was oh, yeah. one of the guys we had. That's yeah, too it cool. Was Daniel, Dis, Disney Dan. Yep, that's cool. Yeah. It was my inventory. Oh. I did was I sent what I could to FBA, which was minimal now because of all the restrictions. Anything that was breakable, because I did a lot of like um, ornament type stuff. I, I knew three, six months ago, I started discounting it slowly bit by bit, and I got rid of most of the bigger stuff. And then some of it, what I did was I actually traded it for non-breakable items and smaller items that nice. I could box up. So my inventory actually is one of the few things that I technically have with me in the Bay Area right now. and. Everything else, I like have a box of little clothes. I have like six shirts, two pairs of pants, and socks and underwear. That's all I'm keeping with me is my personal possessions and my inventory. <laughs> so I have Check. way more inventory than I do like in terms of clothing that I'm actually <laughs> wearing. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know me. I'm that. That's th th there's nothing wrong with that, man. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Just a washer and a couple pairs of pants. Check this out. This is something Disney Dan would love right here. This is a vintage Disneyland Resort Hawaiian shirt. And it has like awesome. tiki mugs and it has like uh, Donald Duck surfing and all sorts of really cool stuff. Dude, does it have a nice. year on it? Well, uh, they have like year, certain years that came out because those are like limited edition usually. Right, they are. And uh, this one does not, unfortunately. It just says Disneyland Resort. And uh, I, I just got it few days ago so that tiki uh, stuff goes for crazy yeah. money yeah, it, yeah it jason t smith and... loves that tiki stuff oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. He, but that that is... that's an awesome freaking hawaiian shirt oh yeah and, and the funny thing with those i don't know what it is with certain stuff that's very it's that's that's a high dollar shirt that you're gonna mm -hmm. sell there you're gonna at least with me i always get these guys that come in there and say oh i'll give you 12 dollars for that shift i'm like Whatever. And then cause I, for something like that, I probably have it listed way higher than that. I don't know, 50, 60, 70, something like that. And then they'll come in right because they're most likely resellers, I'm guessing. Oh, yeah. Um, so and then that same guy ended up buying it for full price, no offer. I just wow. waited for like two, three weeks. Nice. Yeah. And you know what's crazy is I just took best offer off most of my listings and I just price. I'm like the lowest on eBay. I try to get to like the very lowest. Yeah, because I think like when I go to st buy stuff on eBay, I just hit sort by lowest plus shipping. Yeah, exactly. You think with clothes though that like you could, uh, man, it's just it's like I'm not. If I want a pink shirt, I'm not gonna buy the blue shirt because it's cheaper. I don't. I mean, what do you mean by the lowest? Like, how do you keep check on that stuff? Like the same style, same brand, same price. Right. So in my okay. like, if I sell clothing. So, like, well, not if I do sell clothing. So when I sell clothing, I put the brand first, and then I put, okay. like, I explain, like, the print, and then I put, like, men's, adult, size, medium, parentheses, capital M, parentheses. It has all the keywords, because when people go buy clothing on eBay, a lot of it, they just they just type in the brand yeah. and the size. Yeah. <laughs> They're not looking to shop. They're looking for a brand and a size. Yeah. I think with clothing, the reason people have so much trouble is I did this. This is my mistake. I bought a lot of crap, to be honest. It wasn't good stuff. It's nice for me to wear, maybe, mm -hmm. but there's no difference between me and the next 100 listings. So the, all the clothing I bought in the last three months, it has to be something relatively unique in the sense of like that Disney shirt you had. Yep. Yeah, listed under Tiki, under Disney, under Disney Resort, yeah. under Hawaiian shirt. If yeah. it has like multiple things, 
uh, multiple keywords. Like I think you hit on it right there, Shane. That keyword. What's that keyword? Because people don't have time. They're like, I need a Disney shirt. They're yep. not gonna type in, I need a shirt. Oh, and they're gonna type in their size. Exactly. Yeah. Men's this size, this type of shirt. That's it. And it, even if I don't sell anything unique, if it's just like a Ralph Lauren polo, I yep. type in polo Ralph Lauren, and then I type in like gray or blue, uh, and then I do like men's adult size large. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and and keep in mind too, we say we we're typing it in. We're really not even typing it in. No. We type in polo. We we start Ralph. Polo comes up, mm-hmm. and we 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 jump to that, and then we say shirt, and then it, you know, so um, that's kind of a pro tip to go and try that as you scan it in. I mean, as you're searching, mm-hmm. you go and see what comes up, and that's how you kind of put your keywords listing in. It'll it'll be quicker on that, yep. and I think uh, Shane, I I learned that from that process of going and seeing the lowest when a couple years ago. Mm-hmm when I went full time, um, I did from golden finger picker. He was saying, you know, this is, he, he kind of said that and man, you know, it does it. You're going to yeah. be the first they look at. Yeah. And it, it, and cause for me, I'm not a list it and forget it type guy. I don't, that's not, that doesn't work for me. I don't like seeing inventory. Mm-hmm. I'm in the business of sales, not inventory yep. storage. So yeah, cause I'm, I'm about moving it out. So that first, First price one really served me well back in the day. And and I'll yeah. I, if, if it's more unique, I may do like a mid price. You yeah. know. But yeah. how do you closing, guys feel about Oh, go ahead, John. Sorry, Shay. I was just gonna say, how do you guys feel about the eBay hiding the ended auctions to where it makes it a little bit harder for us to research? Mm. Uh and when you click on it, it pops up another window and you're like, Well, this isn't even the item that I was looking at type thing um i don't know it just kind of it kind of bothers me i don't know what they're they're trying to do but i i really never even kind of bring even though i go on auction you know i'm using auctions i don't use auctions as a research Mm -hmm. because it's always going to be much lower than to buy it now yeah i I think the reason maybe they're doing that i don't know i'm not a big etsy seller but i heard that on etsy you can't really look up stuff like that and I'm wondering if they're looking at other platforms to try and copy, to get the most out of the, you know, most bang for their buck. Some of their. Um, it'll, it'll increase, uh, definitely increase the worth point subscription. Worth point a lot of Right. Do they? Well, well gentlemen, and- I'm a, I'm a bid you farewell. This, uh, it, I'm an hour ahead of you guys. I've got to get my beauty rest before my big day tomorrow. Right. So. Right. <laughs> Your big yeah, day got- tomorrow. I got to get going here pretty soon as well. So, all right. Why don't we do this? Why don't we see if we can maybe do something similar like this next week? Um, yeah. How does that sound? Um, Let's do it. Awesome. I'm game. I'm game until you guys get tired of me. <laughs> uh, look me up on. Uh, I'm going to in the side chat over here before everyone runs off. I don't know if you guys utilize uh, the Facebook much, but it'll be in our private chat, and I'm going to okay. share my link to my personal page. Excellent. Yeah. Anyway, you guys, you guys got me because I'm always sitting here. All right. So to anybody that's not listening. Oh, all right. Cool. He just shared that right now. To anybody that's listening on iTunes, I just want to say thanks for listening to the Reseller Niche podcast. Anyone watching on YouTube, you can see our mugs. So we'll wave. Thanks for watching. And we will see you next time. Have a good one. Thank Thank you very much, guys. Have a good day. Thanks, everybody.